All right, everybody. Hello, and welcome to this first real episode of Boss Cranky's Coding Camp. I am the one and only Boss Cranky, and I will be your host. Today, we're going to talk about defensive programming, the who, the what, the why, and the where. You will note that we are using Visual Studio 2022 and C Sharp. I like C Sharp. I think it's a good compromise between a high-level language like, say, JavaScript and a lower-level language like C or C++. I've done a truckload of C and C++ in my past, but it it's not the right one for the use case here. At any rate, so you may be asking yourself, gosh, what really do you mean by defensive programming? Well, a defensive programming is another way of saying DTA, DTA, don't trust anybody. Okay, so while that was a bit abrupt and terse, it's probably not a bad working definition, at least for today's episode. Today, we're going to be focusing on the more simple aspects of defensive programming, like input validation and also sort of business case validation. You can see we've got some examples on screen here. We've got a before, we've got an enhanced, we've got a couple other projects there within this uh, Visual Studio window. All right, so the first example we're going to look at is simple. It is a method that does email validation. And really all it's doing is saying, is this a valid, is the string you provided a valid email address? So simple. And yes, I know this is not sufficient validation, and there's probably more efficient ways of doing it. You know, you can use a regex, you can do whatever you want. That's not what we're focused on here today. So we've got a real simple method here, and we can go look at our unit tests and see what we have for that. Oh, look at that. There's if def Gandalf. I'm sure that all of us are. Um, well, let's just be polite and say we're all aware of who Gandalf is. OK, so we ran the test and we saw that it worked, which is great. Kind of what we expected. Nothing real complicated here. We tested our method and discovered that, yeah, hey, look, it does tell us if that's an email address or at least if it matches our definition of what is a valid email string. But we didn't cover any edge cases. And I know you're thinking edge cases by definition are things that don't happen a lot, but they do happen. And when we don't take them into account, we end up with scenarios like this, by hook or by crook. And what I mean by that is either by accident or by somebody in intentionally injecting bad values. So I know you're thinking, oh, well, this will never happen. Uh, that's a load of horse crap. Let me just go ahead and stop you right there. It happens all the time. So let's see what happens if we try running this with null. And we'll come back over here and we'll rerun this test. Oh no, what's this then? We got a null reference exception. Huh, funny that. And it's because we didn't validate our input, right? So if we come over here back to our method, Sure enough, we're just assuming that candidate will be legit. In some cases, you, you need to be able to say, okay, you know what? I've got to be able to assume stuff about the data coming in. But you can't always, especially if you're creating externally facing APIs. The moment you do that, you got to anticipate people either not knowing how to use your method properly or intentionally using it improperly. So what's the fix for this? Well, the fix is actually really, really simple. And we actually already did it over here in the enhanced. Like I said, we just add a check. You know, is this a uh, null string? Let's come back over to our unit tests. And we'll look at that. We'll actually go ahead and define Gandalf. It will use the enhanced version of our method. So now we can come over here and say, oh, this didn't run before. Well, let's see. Can I run it again and will it work? So let's rerun the test with the proper method name down here, proper assertion. Run it. Okay, cool. Everything went well. And I know what you're thinking. A lot of this is real simple stuff. Oh, is this too basic for you? Well, I assure you, from my experience in the field, some of y'all need to be doing these things and you ain't. Again, he ain't wrong. He's just a little loud. Okay, so in summary, that first example was simple. And that's partly because what we're doing is simple. All we're doing is taking a string and saying, 
does this look like an email address? That's okay. Illustrative purposes only. A null parameter is clearly not a valid email address, so it was easy enough just to return false in that case. The second example we're going to look at still deals with strings as parameters, but is a little bit more complicated and will require a little bit more thought and work.